families throughout history have been chosen to make this decision. Your family must choose to willingly sacrifice one of the three of you to prevent the apocalypse. I'm sure you've been asked plenty of times about what appealed to you about this book. So mm. I wanted to put a little bit of spin on it. And what was it about it that made you realize that you wanted to direct it? Because there was talk that you'd just produce it instead. Yeah. It, it, yeah, I'm so thankful the way you phrased it in a kind of very specific way, the question. I, and, and that I, I think when I feel a compulsion to f see what's going to happen, that I'm not sure what's going to happen, and because I kind of decided to, to go away from the book in the second half, mm. it was beautiful, that process of going, I, I wonder what, how the characters are going to come to terms with this. and. Um, is it possible that I could be one-to-one -one when a decision is made? Either mm. way, how will I feel if they said yes or no? So it was really, uh, uh, I can't wait to see how the story, the story ends, you know? Mm. And I, I, that's, I've become addicted to that in my life. I mean, I'm so, so lucky that that's what I've chosen to, um, you know, you just keep on doing the thing that you practice. And mm. my daughters are, one of them is a filmmaker. And I just said, you need to wake up and just start telling another story, even if anybody, nobody's paying you about it. You, it's, mm. you get addicted to the character and where it's going, and I have to find out, you know. If I just make up something, you know, if I say there's a car, the movie opens, there's a car in a field, a person sitting in there alone in an empty field. Yeah. Now I need to understand. Yeah. Are they going to kill themselves? Are they waiting for somebody? Where are we, you know? Mm. Um, and then you, that, that, that compulsion to figure it out will be like, i got to get back home to write it. Yeah, and I felt that with this movie. Yeah, but, it's like that kind of improvisational, and, yeah. and then, like, what are yeah. the next things? So. Yeah, and you get this rush of this is meant to be, you know, oh my mm. God, they did that, oh, what if they did this? Yeah, and uh, with this kind of film, because it's quite a relatively small cast as mm. well, was it the fact that you'd worked with Nikki and Rupert before and other stuff that you instantly thought of them for their characters, like you knew what they could do, was that the case? Yeah, um, when I read the book, I was like, oh man, you know, what if Rupert played Redmond? That would be, you know, unexpected wild, and then, you know, Nikki to play Sabrina, that elegance that she could bring. And, you know, having just directed them in two different things, you know, their, their colors are so bright, but coming from uh, a very complex place, you know, they're not, they don't choose to express their colors in a quiet way. And I thought, okay, that tells me the language of the piece. So now I have to cast everyone who can in the in these in big giant parts that can vibrate with that. Yeah, and uh, Dave Bautista, I'm always a huge fan of him. Like talking to him, like lovely guy, and also just genuinely making really interesting choices in mm -hmm. his career. And what was it about him that you knew he could take Leonard? Because it's a tough role. Like you yeah. think he's going to be this big hulking brute, and yes. it's like that sensitivity and that vulnerability behind yeah. it. Um, what was it about Dave that? You know, I just felt like this was the, the film gods just giving me exactly the thing that was mm -hmm. written. And that's happened to me a few times in my life when Haley walked in for Six Sense or when uh, I met Bryce for The Village, you know, so many times I'm like, oh my God. And then James McAvoy, you know, yeah. um, I, I can't believe this. This person actually exists. And a giant who can do 30 pages of dialogue, I mean, mm -hmm. And, 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 and that intricacy of it. I mean, he's really, uh, there's only one of him. Um, yeah. And could he, like others that have come from that field, um, uh, cash in on the personality and the aura or his physicality as the thing, the visual aspect of him? Mm. And he's chosen to kind of say, no, I want to start at the bottom of this other part of it, of the journey and learn to craft. I mean, I, I, he's coming from the right place because he wants to respect himself and mm. he wants to respect what he is known for. Um, I think, you know, I found him at the just the right time uh, in his life where he's like, I've done all that stuff. I want to be, I want to look in the mirror and feel proud. Yeah. And and I had no doubt, you know, and when Dave was nervous and, and uh, you know, worried that he wasn't going to be able to pull this off. I was like, Dave, you know, there's almost no way you can't because you're coming from the right place from the character mm. and everything you say is working. Yeah, definitely. And I thought it was interesting that even though there are violent moments in this film, mm -hmm. like you generally choose to pan mm -hmm. away from them or they happen off screen. What, can you just talk a bit about the yeah. creative decision behind that? You know, calibration of, because I, I um, 
smash many genres together, how to balance them together so the flavors don't cancel each other out because they could e easily cancel each other out. Like for example, like I'm trying to get everyone. So you have the 14 year old boys that are like more blood, God, you know, they want the more. And then you have like the older women that are like, oh, I would never, I would never tell Claire to come see this movie. It's too violent, you know. Like, and so you, but I want everyone. And so I, you get for me the, the the actually really fun answer of it is by using their imagination. It's it's more violent. So. Mm -hmm. The, the 14 year old boys, when I pan away or I, I show you something, your mind is doing the rest of it. They realize that their mind is working and making this horrible image. Mm. And so they're like, they get that satisfaction of that adrenaline that comes. And then the older women are, are like, they're feeling the safety of the fact that if they chose to, they can now, they can reduce that image of violence. And there's a balancing act to everything. The humor, you know, how much humor to mine from it. The drama, the violence, you know, all of it, the spectacle, how to balance it all so it doesn't take away. Yeah, definitely. And as you mentioned before, you have, we won't go into spoilers, obviously, but you have made changes and deviated from the book. Yeah. Um, where where did you realize that you could change it and yes. forge your own path? Um, yes. And did you talk to Paul Tremblay about those changes? Yeah, so, you know, I from go when this book came to me to produce, I felt very strongly that the story can't go the way it was written. I, it just can't, it can't go that way. For me, I have my, my feelings about that. And so when the book came back to me and they said, would you be interested? I said, oh yeah, you know, because I was so taken with the setup. And, and so I said, you know, I'm, I am going to do a different version of this book. I won't call the movie the same. I don't want, you know the fans of the book can just have that, and then this is a different artist interpreting it differently. But I did call Paul and I did tell him what I was gonna do, and then he was like, I was gonna do that first. <laughs> and then I got, I decided to do this this other yeah. version, and I was like, great, great. <laughs> <laughs> so at least you you thought similarly to. Yeah, uh, and just finally, I want to talk a bit about um, the trailer, because the first trailer mm. keeps out what they have the, to do, and then the second trailer gives a bit more. Um, from your perspective, because obviously, uh, sometimes the marketing doesn't go the same. Would yeah. you have rather have kept like everything secret or did you feel you needed to show a bit more to draw in that kind of form? You know, crowd? this this is a really great question. Um, I tell f other filmmakers and my daughter who's n now starting, I said the first person that starts telling the story are the marketeers. Mm. That is the art form. We make a, a, an art form that's very uh, costly and it, and it has to be sold to a lot of people so we're not the first ones that start telling the story the marketeers do it first so who what story are they going to tell what are you going to allow them to say first and then what's for the the, the audiences when they come to the movie theaters and the, you have to be aware of this it's very complex otherwise they it could be working at odds against the movie mm -hmm. and that has happened to me it has worked against the movie and in this case I knew that the emotional premise was going to be told. Hmm. And so in the first trailer, uh, we, we didn't want to say it. Yeah. And, then, and, then, and then the second and closing one, say it so that they go, oh my God, you're kidding, that's what the hmm. movie's about? And then come to the movie theater to see what happened.